Hey y'all, Jasmine Lynn from Southern Gals Bliss, here with a quick ad. Might I be so bold as to ask you a question? Well, technically I just did. But my real question is, have you ever considered starting your own podcast? Are you stuck on what podcast hosting platform you should be using? Are you a beginner? Do you not have a whole lot of money for your podcast to start? Well, let me set your mind to rest by letting you know that Anchor is not only a free podcast hosting platform, but they also will distribute your podcast to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and so many, many more. They also have creation tools, so you have the ability to record and edit your podcast right at your fingertips, which you can do so on your phone, tablet, and computer. My favorite benefit of all is that you can also make money through Anchor. That's right, your dream of a money-making podcast is only a few clicks away. I promise you that Anchor is everything you need to make your podcast come to life. So come on, what are you waiting on? Time for you starts now. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Good morning and welcome to the Stay Positive Podcast. I am Jasmine Lynn, your host, and you are listening to the Mindful Morning Show, episode 107. I thought we'd begin today by talking about some yoga. So let's talk some yoga, shall we? Have you ever walked into a yoga class? And let's say you're a beginner, you're a newbie, you're a new yogi, and you heard the teacher say, Namaste. Well, have you ever wondered or are wondering now what the, what the meaning of Namaste actually is? Well, the definition of Namaste is broken down into these three words. First being Nama, which means Bow. Secondly, we have as, meaning I. Thirdly and finally, T, meaning you. Henceforth, Namaste literally means bow me you, or more politically correct, I bow to you. In case you have not noticed at practice, make it a fun mindfulness challenge to yourself. At your next class to see if you can catch your yoga teacher saying it. I have heard Namaste at the beginning of a session, the end of a session, and even heard it at both the start and end of the same session. Where did your yoga teacher say it? I even use Namaste at the beginning of each of my classes. But here's a fun fact. Did you know that Namaste is a Sanskrit word? Namaste is a gesture. It represents a belief, and that belief is that there is a divine spark with all of us, and this spark is located within the heart chakra. It's also looked at, looked as, as an acknowledgement of the soul, in one by the soul in another. Neat, isn't it? So here's some steps on how to make the Namaste gesture. In order to perform Namaste, we begin by placing our hands together in front of your heart chakra, closing your eyes and bowing your head. It also is done by placing your hands together in front of your third eye, bowing your head, finally bringing your hands down to your heart. This is looked at as a deep gesture of respect. Although the West has a slight style of their own because when Namaste is spoken, it is done so in conjunction with a gesture. Its origins, which is India, the gesture itself is significant in itself. In other words, the gesture signifies Namaste. 
making it unnecessary to say the word while bowing. The reason your hands are brought together in front of your heart chakra is so the flow of divine love is increased. Bowing your head and closing your eyes surrenders your mind to the divine in the heart. Namaste can be done to oneself by using it as a meditation technique where you go deeper inside the heart chakra. It can also be done with someone else. However, as a meditation technique, is, it is a beautiful and enjoyable meditation. In a teacher and student relationship, this gesture allows the two to come together energetically to a place of timelessness and connection. Done with a feeling deep in the heart, along with a surrender of the mind, a deep union, which I invite you to envision as a lotus flower of spirits can blossom. Namaste should be done at the beginning and at the end of each class. Although it is done at the end of the class only because the mind is less active and the energy in the room is peaceful. The instructor, instructor initiates namaste as a gesture of gratitude and respect towards her students and in return invites the students to connect with the lineage, allowing the truth to flow. The truth that we are all one when we live from the same divine light we all share inside us. So, to begin to perform Namaste, you first want to press your palms together in front of your chest and center your palms in the middle of your body with your elbows extended out. Both of your arms should be a perfect mirror of one another. Namaste is about centering the energies of your body in balance and harmony. So think about finding the middle of your body as you press your hands together. Your wrist should be centered on your ribcage and not below. Then point your fingers upward. Hold your fingers together rather than spreading them apart as you touch your hands together. Your thumb should be pressed firmly against your body so there's no gap between your chest and your hands. And then you want to bow slightly, bending slightly from the waist and dipping your head. You can close your eyes as you do this to show reverence and respect, and pause for one second at the lowest point of your bow. Say Namaste at the pause of your bow. Some cultures simply bow without actually saying the word, but it is not considered disrespectful to say it if you are unsure. It is often said in a calm and peaceful tone of voice because it is a bit like a blessing, recognizing the divine in the person you are greeting. So treat it with reverence, like a small prayer. Namaste is a way of acknowledging the other person like we've been talking about. It indicates that you see them as your equal, or more precisely, that they are one with you. And then at the end, you want to straighten your posture and open your eyes, still holding your hands in place, and release the bow and lower your arms slowly to your side. You are now ready to interact with the person you're greeting. And that is how you perform Namaste. <laughs> So let's begin our next topic now, which is going to be about how to live a yoga lifestyle. Here's a fun fact to start you off with. Did you know that you don't actually have to practice osanas or poses in order to live a yoga lifestyle? So how would you explain what living a yoga lifestyle is like? Well. Living a yoga lifestyle gives you the key to a happy, healthy, and abundant life. It brings more clarity and balance in all aspects of your life, which include your relationships, your home, and your career. Yoga is well known for its postures and poses, but they aren't that strict of a focus as far as yoga is concerned, and they weren't thousands of years ago either. 
The goal of living a yoga lifestyle is to expand your spiritual energy using breathing techniques and also mental focus techniques. Doing this, it is meant to bring balance, positivity, health, and even happiness into your life. The first step in living a yoga lifestyle is to find a style of yoga that you enjoy. Because in order to practice yoga regularly, you should enjoy it. There are several major styles of yoga to choose from. At southerngalsbliss.site, I teach Hatha Yoga and even combined it with life coaching. But just so you know, each yoga practice focuses on different elements of breath, meditation, and even posture. People usually prefer one style over the other. The next step is to wake up and stretch. In order to be your best possible self every morning, stretch. There's no better feeling in the world than lengthening those tight muscles that you have had after a night's sleep that are stiff in your body. One key component of stretching is how you are breathing. So when you stretch, focus on your breath. Take deep inhales and exhales. This will relieve stress and have a wonderful calming effect on you. But there's also other benefits of stretching. These benefits include an increase in your blood flow to your muscle and brain. You have more energy. You are better flexibly. <laughs> you have a lower stress level and you even can recover faster from injuries. The third thing to do is to make healthy food choices or pure food choices. Some people even go as far as making just plant food choices. So practicing yoga has a positive effect on your body and it will help you to strengthen and stretch your muscles, especially if you're taking a yoga class. When taking a yoga class, this gives you the space you need to listen to your body and go inward. It's super important to be physically prepared for each class that you're taking in order to make the most of it. Be mindful of the food choices the day of the class and even the day prior. Eat healthy, nutritious foods that will provide you a maximum amount of energy. Be careful to stay away from processed foods because it can make you feel bloated or weighed down in class. And also avoid foods that are too sugary or full of empty calories. You want your goal to be that you eat as many fuel enhancing foods for your practice. Also, the next step is staying hydrated throughout the day. It's a must. So try to stick to drinking more water rather than coffee, soda, juice, and certainly alcohol. Drinking water first thing in the morning is a great way to start your day. When you hydrate yourself, you create more oxygenated blood, and this stimulates the growth of red blood cells. And do you know what that does? It gives you energy. Another benefit of staying hydrated is an increased metabolic rate. It means that your body will burn calories more quickly. Believe it or not, drinking warm wa water can stop premature aging by repairing your skin cells and supporting your digestive system. And even drinking it on an empty stomach can clear your body of toxins, which keeps your skin healthy and glowing. The next step is to meditate. And I am a meditation instructor and a mindfulness life coach. So I do teach meditation and also have a meditation session prior to beginning my yoga classes. But meditation cultivates a healthy yoga lifestyle. It shows that people who meditate regularly have better